everyone, and welcome to the Sedona International Film Festival. I'm your host, Carol Kahn. We are coming to you live from Yavapai College, the Sedona campus, and we would like to thank our sponsors, Northern Arizona Healthcare. And I've been waiting for this interview for quite some time because we want to give a shout out to Amy, one of the executive producers of Addicts Wake, and we're so sorry that you're not here. We just send you the best wishes to get well, and uh, we, I know we will be talking <laughs> anyway, but we certainly miss you. And, um, and you have a great team here, so um, I'm excited about that. And Michael and I got to ride back last night on the, um, yeah, on the shuttle. And, um, you know, I gave him all the, I don't know if he told you, but I gave him all tips where to go because it was snowing, you know, all day yesterday. Yes. And it's beautiful, like, waking up to this because it melts really fast. So I gave him all the places to go. And I asked him, I said, did you get to, like, where I told you to go? He's like, no. <laughs> we're we're going to get there. Yesterday was a long, was a long travel day. <laughs> I might forgive you, but by tomorrow it could be melted. I don't know. Yeah. But still, you get to see Sedona, right? I was full right? of ambition last night. <laughs> he couldn't sleep, which is why he <laughs> he got up and went to the party. <laughs> I, however, was tucked in by that time. So so you yes. were already in bed. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Yes. yes, I thought I'll start in today. So is this your first, both your first time in Sedona? It is my first time in Sedona. Yeah, I've been here with my wife and kids. Okay, oh, yeah. so yeah. you've been here before. Yeah. Awesome. And your roles, you're executive producer, correct? Executive producer, co-producer. Okay. Yeah. And then you are the director? Yes. Is that correct, of the film? Right. Um, and so tell, tell us a little bit about Addicts Week. Okay. Um, I'll start. Fine. You finish. Oh, sounds good. Um, the Addicts Week actually came as a result of a call from Amy after she had seen a Facebook post from a mutual friend. And uh, we just talked about the issue of addiction and she said is it bad where you are which is in southern Indiana and I said yes I was shocked when we moved to this beautiful uh, town and and county of southern Indiana that the addiction was so pervasive and then I began working with some ladies in our uh, local jail started hearing their stories and immediately just realized that they're no different than you and I. These mm -hmm. were ladies with dreams and careers and families and jobs and in a moment of, of you know, uh, darkness decided to try a highly addictive drug and, and boom, the hook was set deep very quickly. And so when Amy said, is there a story to tell? I said, I think there's a national story to tell, but we decided to focus in on Brown County because it really serves as a microcosm of what's happening across our nation from east to west coast mm -hmm. and everything in between. And it just was um, the right setting for, for this film. You can add to that. Yeah, and so we, as we started a journey, we, we knew in, in Brown County in particular, in 2017, the a community of about 15,000 people. Yeah lost six young men to overdose deaths. And in that population, that's, that's earth moving. It's very felt. And so um, it, was, uh, it was something that really um, was a turning point, in, in particular because one of the families who lost their son, the parents decided to respond in a, in a, in a way that it's very easy to imagine people going into kind of a grief shell. Um, they actually did the opposite. Mm -hmm. they, oh, they put down all the guards and said, we have to talk about this. We have to, if we're gonna change something, if we're gonna, in fact, what they wound up using was a, the phrase, do something. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do something about this. And we have to acknowledge we got the issue and, and you know, nobody feels it more than us. And so when they did that, father's a pastor, mother's a school teacher, very respected in the community. When they did that, people start talking about it in church. Okay, we got the issue too, or our neighbors had the issue. The newspaper started writing stories about it. The sheriff, who's, uh, you know, right. you could see him as a, as a crusty old school <laughs> sheriff, he's got a heart of gold. And so he looked at, he was going to funerals, it's a small community, and uh, of the people he's sworn to protect. And he, you know, that whatever we're doing isn't working, we have to change. Mm -hmm. Um, the schools, the addiction of this young man who passed away began in the schools, the Brown County schools. And so the school superintendent there also could have said, 
no, no, we don't have a problem here. But instead, she leaned in and said, you know, we have to do something. We have to be better. And uh, so the entire community began to kind of link. Um, and it drove an enormous amount of change. Now, it's not, not perfect. perfect. There's still overdose doses. But the amount of conversation that, and the, one of the big problems communities across the country is that nobody will talk about it. Nobody will acknowledge that no, 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 it doesn't happen in our perfect little place. Um, but it does. And when you start talking about it, then you can start healing. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. so that was the beginning. We knew we had that story to talk about, but we met other people along the way and we wound up filming for almost two years. Oh, um, wow. And uh, um, the result is, is the Addicts Wake. So we do have a clip um, to show of Addicts Wake. So let's take a look at that. Okay. walk through Brown County, it's like a Hallmark movie. People like the idea of Norman Rockwell, but that means you're making it look like everything's perfect when we all know things aren't perfect. Addiction's about killing me, it's about beating me. It's insidious and it's quiet. I'm definitely an addict. It will kill. It was either this or death. That's where I was going, it was either this or death. In the military, we don't cry. You know, it's like you just don't. And uh, this thing has been, uh, this is worse than going to Iraq. It's a war in Brown County. And uh, I don't like losing. I don't like losing. I've had students who have watched loved ones overdose. I've had students who have parents in jail. They're kind of caught in the crossfire, and many kids are aware of my experience. You're always searching for the best stuff. Somebody could be selling really good stuff, but somebody could be selling stuff that just killed somebody, and you want the stuff that just killed somebody because it was that good. There's no control. I lost part of my soul when I realized I was an addict. It changes you immediately and for life. Ethan's a freshman in high school this year and Landon's in sixth grade. Here I am missing out on that because now dad's in jail. When he went back into jail this last time, he seemed like he really didn't care anymore. They were working on him, but they couldn't bring him back. There's no way to explain what that feeling is to someone when you, you feel like a coward and you can't go in the room and uh, when you know. was gone. He's in my heart. That's why he's in my heart. That's all I had. I think that's the moment that, that really drove everything. Do something. People need to start doing something. We can't keep talking about it can't just keep complaining about it. We can't tell everybody how to fix it. We need to start doing something. I've only been clean for nine months now, but I made a promise to myself and to God. It's nice to, to be able to come back, man, and uh, you know, see everybody. I can't do it alone, but I wasn't gonna do it no more. And we're seeing some success. I think that we have something to share. I think people will be knocking on our door and wanting to see what's going on here. You have to tell Amy. She's probably watching anyway, but <laughs> she always makes me cry. Right? <laughs> There's always tears in, in her films. So, okay, Amy. <laughs> I have uh, seen that clip 250 times, and those are my neighbors. You know, these are people that I, in the last five years, have come to love. And uh, so it's hard for me to watch that because I have children. And, right. You know, right. I can't imagine it. 
Yeah, you know, when I was watching the film, I started thinking about, like, when I was in grade school, which was eons ago. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, even then, like, you know, there was the issue of, like, drugs. And they would, like, put films out and documentaries that you would, like, watch and hopefully, like, psychologically, <laughs> like, make us not do it. Um, and, you know, it still it still exists. It doesn't matter when, what part of time, you know, it, it still exists. It's just, you know, hope to get, it will get better. Yeah, it, hope, and, and then what? one of the things that is not in the trailer is that we are beginning to understand the science yes. behind addiction. Mm -hmm. uh, and we talk about it in the film. It's, it's very driven not by so much supply and demand as it is pain. Yeah. So pain is sort of the ultimate gateway drug. And once you've got pain that you've got a mask, somehow, sometimes you don't even know you have it, mm -hmm. most times. Um, uh, you'll do anything to kind of get that awful feeling inside you suppressed. Drugs are an easy way to do that. And so the problem is, as Lisa said at the beginning, once that hook gets set, um, it's really, really hard to get it out. The drugs today are so different when we were all in school. They're so potent. And they're, they're uh, many times now the trend is to to cut a drug or to lace it with fentanyl which is so highly addictive and and that's that's why these addictions are happening at, at enormous rates because of their addictive uh, properties they're just uh, way more potent than than when we heard of drugs years mm -hmm. ago right. and so fentanyl is a big part of that yeah, I wanted to ask you because I was really curious. The poster that you use it's actually an art piece, and I know it's an artist community. So I was trying to do some research on the actual artist, yeah. and then I found um, that actually someone it was the artist's brother. I'm assuming his father. Fa oh, father uh -huh. gave it to you. Uh -huh. So um, so I figured there was a story behind. There's that. a great story. We had so many great we stories did. along the way. Um, I told Michael, I said, hey, I'm going to run up to John Mellencamp's recording studio. He's literally 16 miles from my house uh, towards Bloomington. And I knock on the door, and I have a working summary on an eight and a half by, you know, 11 sheet of paper. And I, Hi, I'm Lisa Hall. I'm going to make a documentary, and I'd like to know if we could use John's uh, artwork for... This amazing artwork. Okay. <laughs> and he is an incredible painter, as you, as you might know. And his artwork is very dark which is very appropriate for you know this topic and it took them about what three months four months of me kind of coming back and and they eventually said no I mean why would they say yes they had no idea who I was if I was really going to accomplish this documentary <laughs> with Michael and Amy and you know so I was like okay but my daughter-in-law in the interim had found this book and gave it to me at a wedding where we were all together and I started looking through these pictures, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this artwork is compelling. I mean, it's it, the the pain in that artwork is palpable. Mm -hmm. And so I I traced, you know, as best as I could the the way to get to Rocky, who may be watching. Hi, Rocky. <laughs> and um, I called him. I said, we're going to make this film, and how would you feel about us using Patrick's artwork? Patrick Atkinson is the artist, very well known on uh, the West Coast and really throughout the nation. He has some artwork in Nordstrom's and some different well-known places, but he died at 32 in active addiction to an overdose, left a small children and a family. And so this was Rocky and his wife Dolce's way of kind of keeping Patrick's memory alive, but they've now spent the better part of the last 12 years um, working for recovery for men and women with treatment centers and transitional housing. And so he was just a spectacular relationship for us. It's been so much fun to work with Rocky. Wow. And wow. so generous of him to just hand us Patrick's artwork because it is fantastic work. Yeah, every time I see it, really, there's there's something that draws me into it as well, and so I knew that there was some kind of story behind that. Yes. <laughs> yes. So thank you for sharing sharing yes. that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's just one of many, but I, I guess I would say for uh, people who are considering seeing this film, we have three goals with this film that are that are pretty clear cut, and one is to create a more broad and deep emotional awareness. You know, we, as Michael said earlier, if, if we cannot get this problem out into the light, we're not going to be able to create solutions to solve it forever, long term. 
and the second goal is to reduce shame and stigma it is so prevalent in keeping people from getting the help that they need and there's just when we talk to 100 hours of interviews with people who have, have struggled you know they consider themselves an addict mm -hmm. and we're just trying to change the language of the industry so it just doesn't define people and then I think the third goal is this clarion call to debunk the whole silo mentality that that it's this treatment center's responsibility or it's this um, mental health counseling's responsibility we have to link arms as communities this has to be grassroots efforts government is not going to solve this and and so we have got to look inside your community no matter how large or small it is and say what are our resources how do we come together to have creative solutions discussions find the sources of pain in community everybody has pain everybody mm -hmm. and this is just one way people have you know chosen to to mask it or to deal with it and so we really want this to be an inspirational film for communities to start talking to one another absolutely and thank you so much for bringing that this to our attention and solutions right, right. of a community solution together and everybody has to work together right. so how can people find out about the film yeah well we we have a website and we have a facebook page so the facebook page is just the addicts wake and then the website is the addictswake.com super original <laughs> and um we are trying to to keep up with kind of this groundswell that's that's happening since we premiered in october and so we're trying to keep up to date with showings and where we're screening and and that kind of thing but yeah my phone number my email is on that um uh, URL page and uh, people can reach out if they're interested in community screenings we can bring this to theaters um, Michael's done a lot of work to get it in a format you know just uh, that's really usable for most theaters and and then we'll come and we'll have community conversations so uh, we also have a virtual platform that we're partnered with called show and tell and they're fantastic they've created this incredible platform very user friendly and so we'll put all that information and keep that updated on our Facebook page and our, our uh, website and, okay. and I know both of us are just super appreciative to yes. be welcomed into a festival like this I mean Yes. the amount of exposure okay this is an indiana story now we intended it to be something that is uh translatable to any community in america Absolutely. it's obviously happening there but you know you, to bring it to arizona and and to support it and support filmmakers i mean that's Thank a you. really great yeah. honor for us and and to us super important so yeah. we're grateful well, awesome. And how can people see the screening of it, of Addicts Week? We are tonight mm -hmm. at uh, 7 p.m. at the Mary Fisher Theater. Okay. And uh, Saturday, 10 a.m. at Harkins One. Harkins One. <laughs> Harkins One. Thank you. Not You're a great team. <laughs> You're a great team. <laughs> We're starting to be able to finish each other's sentences. <laughs> that's how much time it's been in the last two years. So. All right, that's a little scary. <laughs> but, yeah, <all> right. <laughs> That's what happens. Right. <laughs> and I also think you need to um, get some giclés of that painting so it could be sold as a fundraiser. Yeah, oh, I'll be the first in line. Love your idea. You Thank you. All right. All right, because of that, I'll get the first copy. Awesome. <laughs> I will We're going to make you lead the effort. <laughs> I'll do it. Okay. I'm going to talk to Rocky about that right away. I, I do have something for you. So, um, <laughs> because, because of what you just said, I have something for you. So well, I'll bring I've, it to you. It's been such a pleasure having you both here with us. So thank you so much. And another shout out to Amy. Yes. Amy, get well. Get well. Amy, get well. Amy, come on. We need you festival ready. Yes. And don't forget to follow us, uh, hashtag Sedona Film Fest 2022 and hashtag Sedona Film Fest. We'll be back with more filmmaker interviews after this.